We start with the question of transgender children and how young is too young for medical treatment. As Barbara Pinto reports, the choices for these young people and their families are particularly complicated. 17-year-old Emmett Pascal, a senior at Warren Township High School in North Suburban Gurney, seems like any other teenage boy. <gasps> Until he talks about his childhood. My life as Emily is still my life now, and my life as Emmett was my life then. I'm, I see myself as, as the same person. I cherish all of my memories, even if it's with a different name, even if it's with a ponytail. I keep every picture. His parents do, too, on the walls of their home. The little girl in the pink dress with a sweet smile is Emmett, who was born Emily. As a little girl, he didn't present as a little girl. He was the leader in the neighborhood and made up the games and all the kids followed. And, and you know, um, he didn't take too much guff from anyone either. So perhaps he acted more like a boy than, than we ever wanted to believe. The Pascals thought they were raising a tomboy until junior year of high school when their oldest child was hospitalized five times with suicidal depression. Emmett had no explanation for his depression until he read about gender dysphoria online and realized his intense frustration was with a female body that didn't match his male identity. That moment changed everything. So there's a relief in that, but then there's also this, this immense fear and sadness of, well, how am I going to accomplish this? Is everyone going to accept me? I'm never going to be born a male. I was scared. I didn't want my girl presenting as a boy. I didn't want my girl going through a phase where he was going to be ridiculed. The Pascals found answers and care at the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital Gender and Sex Development Program, one of only a handful of similar programs nationwide. I think there's a misconception sometimes out there that a program such as ours is intervening medically, you know, or God forbid, surgically in young children. That's not what this program does and not what programs like it across the country do. Pediatrician Robert Garofalo heads the Division of Adolescent Medicine that provides a combination of psychological and medical care. Our job is to sort of tell people what we know about the science, tell people what we know you know, about the options, and then have them as families make a decision that's in their best interest. Those decisions, particularly for children and adolescents, can be complex and controversial. Some of those options include drugs that temporarily block puberty, and for older teens, hormones that cause more permanent changes, estrogen to bring on female puberty, and testosterone to bring on male puberty. Like all drugs, there are side effects, including increased risks of cancers and heart disease. But there are few studies on long-term use of these drugs among people who are transgender. The studies that have been done indicate much higher rates of suicide in the transgender community, 41 percent, compared to less than 5 percent in the general population. They also are more likely to suffer from higher instances of depression and substance abuse. And gender is complex in childhood certain percentage of young people that are children who present as gender non-conforming as children may not persist as gender non-conforming when they're adolescents or adults. Nobody really knows the exact percentage um, and nobody really knows you know what are the factors that are contr going to contribute to like what um, might cause someone to persist or not to persist. Those questions concern activist Peter La Barbera, president of the Center for Morality. He believes medical decisions resulting in permanent change, such as surgery or cross-sex hormones, should be delayed until adulthood. Our hearts go out to the parents. We know these are very difficult issues. But radical gender surgeries are often not the answer. We see studies which show that adults who go through um, uh, sex reassignment surgeries are often still depressed still suicidal after going through these body disfiguring operations. We don't offer anything that um, would have any long lasting negative or irreversible effect uh, unless uh, this is a truly a kid who's older, who can make a wise decision, whose family is supportive. Dr. Scott Leibowitz is a child and adolescent psychiatrist with the Lurie Children's Gender and Sex Development Program. I would argue that we can't be worried about some theoretical cancer that might be happening 
in 20 years if we don't have a child or an adolescent at all if they commit suicide. That is why the Pascals had little doubt about moving ahead with medical intervention. It was truly a life or death situation for us, so it was something we just felt we needed to do. With the help of his health care team at Lurie to get insurance to cover the $12,000 cost, Emmett recently had top surgery, essentially a double mastectomy to remove breast tissue. And he started on daily doses of testosterone to bring on male puberty. He's also legally changed his name from Emily to Emmett. I feel more correct. I, I feel like I'm starting to fit, like the puzzle is coming together. For In the Loop, I'm Barbara Pinto. Last May, the Obama administration directed schools across the nation to provide transgender students with access to facilities, including bathrooms and locker rooms that match their chosen gender identity. Illinois is one of just 19 states, plus Washington, D.C., that already provides non-discrimination protections on the basis of gender identity and sexual orientation.